Hi, and welcome to lesson two here in our compounds unit. In lesson one, we talked about the different types of compounds that we need to be familiar with. In the next couple of lessons, we're gonna look at molecular compounds in detail. Here in lesson two, we're gonna talk about how to represent the structures of different molecules. What you see here are water and carbon dioxide represented as what are called space filling models, which is actually my favorite way of showing molecules. But you're not going to be representing molecules using space filling diagrams. You really need a computer in order to do it well. There are actually a whole bunch of different ways to draw molecules in chemistry. When we want to draw molecules, we are going to use Lewis dot structures. This is going to take the rules that we talked about back when we talked about Lewis dot diagrams of atoms, and we're going to apply that to covalent structures. The way this works is pretty simple. The valence electrons are shown around each atom and bonds are always going to be represented as solid lines. Remember that a covalent bond or one line represents the sharing of two valence electrons. Let's take carbon dioxide and water and represent them as Lewis dot structures. This is the Lewis dot structure for carbon dioxide. What you can see here is that we've got carbon and carbon is covalently bonded to two different oxygen atoms. Both of those bonds are double covalent bonds. So each of those bonds represents four total electrons. Since carbon is making two double bonds, it has access to its full eight valence electrons. Oxygen is making one double bond to carbon, so that gives it four of its valence electrons. And then each oxygen atom has four dots to represent the other four valence, bringing both of the oxygen atoms totals to eight valence electrons. Water is represented this way. You can see that we have oxygen in the middle, covalently bonded to two hydrogen atoms. Remember that hydrogen only wants two valence electrons, and that's represented by the single covalent bond that it makes. Oxygen is getting four valence electrons in total from its two covalent bonds, and it has four dots to represent the other four valence it needs to get to a stable octet configuration. You are going to need to be able to draw Lewis structures of molecules as well. And these are the steps that I would suggest that you follow. In step one, you're going to determine the total number of valence electrons that you have. And in case you ever forget about an atom's number of valence electrons, remember that you can always get this off of the periodic table. We're gonna work through an example of ammonia together. Ammonia has the chemical formula NH3. So it's one nitrogen atom and three hydrogen atoms. When we need to figure out the total number of valence electrons that ammonia has, it's going to equal the valence electrons that nitrogen has plus the valence electrons that each of the three hydrogens have. Nitrogen has five valence electrons and hydrogen has one. So the total number of valence electrons that ammonia has is eight total valence electrons. Once I have that, I can now start to represent the molecule as a structure. In step two, what you're going to do is draw a skeleton structure. A skeleton structure has every atom connected to every other atom with one covalent bond. What's really important to do is after we make that skeleton structure, we need to subtract the total number of valence electrons that we used when we made that structure from our total that we have available to draw the overall molecule. Since ammonia has eight valence electrons, we're going to set up our skeleton structure like this. It's important to pause here and note that this is really the only acceptable skeleton structure that we can have with the nitrogen in the middle and each of the three hydrogens bonded to that nitrogen. Now, you don't really have to put them with the two hydrogens on the side and the one pointing down. You could have put them on any of the sides of the nitrogen that you wanted, as long as you had no more than one on the side. But generally speaking, the convention that we use is to leave the top open when it's available. Also remember that each atom can only make as many covalent bonds as it has open orbitals with which to make those bonds. That's why we have to connect each of the hydrogens to the nitrogen. Hydrogen can only make one covalent bond because then it will have its full two valence electrons. If we connect one hydrogen to another hydrogen, that's all of the bonds that either of those hydrogens can make. And we will not be able to then connect those two hydrogens to our nitrogen. So when we're making our skeleton structure for ammonia, we have certain constraints that we absolutely have to follow. Now remember to subtract the total number of valence electrons that we used. Each covalent bond represents two total valence electrons. So I've used three covalent bonds here, so I need to subtract six total electrons from my eight. I now have two valence electrons that remain. In step three, we need to satisfy all of the valences that we have. We're going to use the remaining valence electrons to make sure that every atom has access to a full valence electron shell, which is usually eight electrons except two for hydrogen. Looking at the molecule that we've drawn already, we have three hydrogens, each one making one covalent bond. That one covalent bond represents two total valence electrons. So each of these hydrogens has the two total valence electrons that they need. 
Nitrogen needs a total of eight valence electrons. Nitrogen currently has access to six, two from each of the covalent bonds that it's made to those three hydrogen atoms. Nitrogen still needs two more valence electrons. That is exactly the number of valence electrons I have remaining. And so I'm going to place those two valence electrons on top of my nitrogen atom, which gives nitrogen the eight that it needs. I'm then going to subtract those two from my total, and I wind up with zero valence electrons left, which is exactly how many I wanna have at the end when my structure is drawn. Does this make sense? If it doesn't, take a moment and write down any questions that you have, and then let's move on. There are a couple of covalent structure pro tips that I'm going to pass on to you here. These come from my history of drawing covalent structures and from dealing with students who run into the same kinds of issues year after year. Pro tip number one is that every atom can only make as many covalent bonds as they have open valence orbitals for. We talked about that when we did our ammonia structure with the hydrogen atoms, but it's a good idea to remember that so that you don't wind up drawing an oxygen atom making three covalent bonds, for instance. Pro tip number two is that atoms can only have single, double, or triple bonds. You cannot make a quadruple covalent bond. An atom can make up to four covalent bonds if it has the ability to, for instance with carbon, but those four covalent bonds have to be some combination of single, double, and triple bonds in order to add up to four. The quadruple bond does not exist. And my final tip to you is that if you ever need more valence electrons than you actually have, you have to make an additional covalent bond. That's really the only way that you're going to be able to draw a structure where everybody has the total number of valence electrons that they need if you're ever dealing with this kind of situation where it seems like you need more electrons than you have access to. Let's look at an example of diatomic nitrogen or N2 and see how we can use these rules in order to make our structure. So N2 has 10 valence electrons, each of the nitrogen has five. I'm going to draw my skeleton structure and you can see it right here. I've got a nitrogen covalently bonded to another nitrogen. I've just used two valence electrons. I now have eight that remain. Both of these nitrogens currently have two total valence electrons. And they both need a total of eight. So right now I would need to get each of these nitrogens an additional six valence electrons. Since I have two atoms, six plus six is 12 and I do not have 12 valence electrons available. I only have eight. That's where pro tip number three comes in. I'm going to need to make another covalent bond. When I do that, let's subtract the two electrons that I just spent. I now have six total valence electrons remaining, and each of these nitrogen atoms currently has access to four, and they still each need four more. Four plus four is eight. I don't have eight, I only have six. I'm going to need to make another covalent bond between the nitrogens. That is a triple covalent bond. Notice that nitrogen can absolutely make a triple covalent bond because it has five total valence electrons. It's looking to get three more. So rules one and two are being followed when I make this structure. Since I just used two more valence electrons to make my triple covalent bond, I need to subtract the additional two electrons. I now have four remaining. Each of these nitrogen atoms has six total valence electrons currently from that triple covalent bond. Since both of these nitrogen atoms just need two more valence electrons each, and I've got four left, I'm going to put those as dots on both of my nitrogen atoms. I'm then going to subtract four more valence electrons from my total, which leaves me with zero. This is an acceptable Lewis structure for diatomic nitrogen, N2. Does that make sense? If it doesn't, take a moment and write down any questions that you have, and then when you're ready, let's move on. Thanks so much for watching our discussion of drawing Lewis structures for covalent molecules. Take a moment here at the end and make sure you can do each of the following. Make sure that you can draw valid Lewis dot diagrams for simple covalent molecules. Molecules that are made out of two, three, four, five, maybe six or seven atoms. That's really where my expectation of what you can draw stops for the purpose of honors chemistry. But if you can draw those, you can probably draw more complex molecules as well. Also make sure that you can identify valid and invalid Lewis dot diagrams for simple covalent molecules. If you see a molecule where an atom is making five covalent bonds, for instance, you should be able to reject that right out. The other thing that we'll mention here at the end is that practice is really, really important for being able to do things like drawing covalent structures. We're going to be doing quite a bit of practice on this in class, but I've also provided some practice resources on my website where you can go if you want to get more practice drawing structures. The more you do this, the better you'll get until you get to the point where it's all automatic, at which point you know everything you really need to know. If you can do these things, you're doing great. If not, that's okay too. Take a moment and write down any questions that you have. You can always get in touch with me by leaving a comment below the video or through the information in the info field. Thanks again for watching. I really appreciate it. Have a great day.